His Excellency Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya. His Excellency Mr. Mogwitsi Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana. His Excellency Mr. Muhammadu Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His Excellency Mr. Felix Muluwa, Prime Minister of the Central African Republic. His Excellency Mr. Colin Vixel Kelapile, President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Her Excellency Madam Inger Anderson, Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Program, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. It is an absolute privilege to preside over the special session of the Environment Assembly to commemorate the establishment of the United Nations Environment Program. Today is a moment to celebrate this incredible institution, its member states, and the people that bring it to life. Today is also a moment to celebrate environmental multilateralism, its highs, its lows, its opportunities, its challenges, and to advance the conversation on how we can continue to build on these achievements and lessons over the next 50 years. But before looking ahead, we need to look back. It is only through unpacking our lessons from the past that we can start to visualize and create our own future. The last 50 years have demonstrated an impressive record of environmental achievement. Much more is being learned, much more, much more is being done, and certainly a more lasting accomplishment has been the shaping of the multilateral institutions that will continue to protect our environment in the years to come. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, how did we get here? Looking back at the day UNEP came into being, at the end of the first United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, the Stockholm Conference held in 1972, that was the starting point of multilateral efforts to address environmental problems. And with the creation of UNEP came notable achievements of its governing council, which was composed at the time of only 58 member states. Hosting the secretariats of several multilateral environmental agreements and research bodies, co-establishing the intergovernmental panel cl climate change, and implementing the global environment facility and the multilateral funds for the implementation of the Montreal Protocol, the creation of the intergovernmental Montevideo program on promoting and implementing environmental law. These are just a few examples. And then we speak, keep forward to 2013, when the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 67-213 to strengthen and upgrade UNEP to respond to growing environmental challenges. That was quickly followed by the designation of the UNEP Governing Council to what we have today, the United Nations Environment Assembly of the United Nations Environment Program with universal membership. If 2013 was the year of strengthening UNEP's governing body and designing the foundations of UNEA, the task of the global community since then has been to follow through on the great commitments placed on this organization. And the results of the work of the Assembly are tangible. I do not have to remind you of this series of important resolutions that have been adopted since 2013, including the landmark resolution on plastics adopted just yesterday. The implications of this resolution are enormous. UNEA 5.2 and the special session on UNEP at 50 will certainly be remembered as one of the key, key global inter, international intergovernmental meetings on the environment. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, despite how far we've come in multilateralism, in the governance of, of UNEP over the, its 50 years, 
serious challenges continue to threaten these achievements. The intensive use of our planet's finite resources and increasing inequalities have all contributed to consequences that can compromise the gains already achieved and the viability of current and future generations' development. The crisis we are living through at the moment, COVID-19 pandemic, the associated challenges of recovering from widespread economic slowdown, potentially a recession, the climate emergency, biodiversity loss, pollution, are all too complex. They are transboundary, they are multifaceted, and therefore any state, it's very difficult for any state to tackle on its own. In the last five decades, we've seen considerable progress in terms of protecting the environment. We've seen technological revolutions in terms of growth of the global economy, worldwide social development. We must continue strengthening multilateralism to contribute to meaningfully create lasting solutions. Respect of a global rules-based system has underpinned environmental conservation for the past 50 years. The Environment Assembly embodies this principle and remains an ins indispensable authority in facing present and future challenges. Let me also acknowledge that environmental multilateralism can be a complex, slow, and frustrating process. However, its doubt in it is counterproductive. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end by once again going back to UNEP's beginning and share an excerpt from a quote by Klaus Topfer, UNEP's former executive director. The extraordinary rise in both human populations and consumptions, consumption levels leaves us no choice but to take innovative and ambitious actions to reverse the widespread destruction of species and ecosystems. UNEP's forefathers left to us the responsibility of a better world. And today's achievements are because of those foundations. The opportunity is now for us, as the Environment Assembly, governing the United Nations Environment Program, to take up the challenge of moving environmental multilateralism system to the next level. It's up to us to move the pendulum, move the needle, and to pave the way for the next generation. I look forward to working with you all to support this effort. Happiest 50th birthday to the UN Environment Programme. Thank you very much. Shukran. Merci. Asante ni sana. <laughs>